Hey, it's Wade, and in the last episode of the Designing a Board Game, I said that I would talk about the process of the enemy design, because that was the next thing I was working on. However, I was wrong. I totally forgot that before I worked on enemies for my board game, I worked on the materials and the items. Yeah, so that actually took like a month to work on of me just spending time on that. So I should talk about that first, I think. So while designing the items and the material cards for crafting items, I was in Thailand for like three weeks. There was a lot of times I was on like a long night bus or a sleeper train, which were pretty cool. And I would, I had a little notebook and a pencil and I would just spend that whole time writing down ideas for items, for materials, for, I would do math of, you know, cause I wanted all the ratios to be right. Cause these are decks of cards. So I wanted to make sure that the deck isn't too big and there's just enough cards and the ratio of each card is just right because the way the materials work. It's like I already mentioned before, the game has multiple biomes. You've got these hexes that make the board, and there's forest, tundra, mountain, water, grassland, desert. The grasslands were areas that did not have any enemies in them. They were like safe places, safe zones where you could rest your character. The grasslands didn't have materials because I wanted it to be like a place that basically no risk, no reward. They didn't want there to be materials. They didn't want you to just basically cheaply, easily exploit the system by just every turn gathering materials to craft good gear without ever having to fight anything. And some of the other biomes had materials that you could gather from the environment, so the forest and the mountains. The desert and water, I originally wanted to do some materials. I wanted to have each biome have materials, except for the grasslands but I decided not to. I decided instead to do forest materials, mountain materials, enemy materials, and dungeon materials. So for instance, if you're in the forest and you defeat an enemy, then at the end of your turn, you have to make a decision. Do you want to gather from the forest or do you want to gather from the enemy? But you can't gather from both. You can only gather one time each turn. And the way that you gather, just rolling a die, a d6, and if you roll a one or a two, you don't gather any material cards. If you roll a three or a four, you gather one material card, and a five or a six, you gather two material cards. There's also a gathering stat that there are certain items in the game that would increase your gathering stat, but it was also one of the four types of enchantments, um, was a gathering enchantment, so you, you know, spend some magic dust to enchant one of your pieces of gear to do plus one or plus two gathering. You add one to your, to whatever you roll. So if you have a gathering stat of two and you roll a three, then you actually rolled a five. So now you take two cards. So it gives you a little bonus. And this actually goes past the limit of the dice. So if you're, if you have a gathering stat of plus two and you roll a six, it actually counts as a roll of eight, which makes you grab three cards. So if you like get your gathering stat really high, you can get three, four material cards every round to really craft a lot or just sell that stuff. Because every material card has a gold value also, in case you just want to sell it or maybe trade it to another player. And I actually have, um, this is my notebook that I, it's filled with my math and, and ideas. So this page right here, I'll show you, it's going to take up like the whole screen, is me writing down how many of each materials and what the the ratios should be so what percentage of the deck should be wood for the forest and what percentage of the deck should be magic berries or wild mushrooms or sage which i later renamed to king's foil because lord of the rings yeah so i would i spent like just hours upon hours in these bus rides writing down all these ideas so i'll, I'll go over what the materials actually were there are some common materials and some rare materials and there is one like very rare material in the game. In the forest, the deck of material cards had 32 cards in it, and there were no rare items in the forest. The forest was basically meant to be a large area of the map. A lot of your map would be forest, so it's a more common area. So there's basic crafting materials that are needed for a lot of things in there. You've got eight wood, which are used for crafting anything made out of wood. So you wanna make a torch, needs wood. You wanna make a shield, needs wood. You wanna make a staff, needs wood or a wand. There were also eight magic berries, which were used to make mana potions. Mana potions would be really helpful. At least they were supposed to be helpful. They didn't actually turn out to be amazingly helpful. And there was also the king's foil, eight of those. Those were also needed in making potions. Basically the healing plant always needed to make 
healing potions, which are or designed to be anyway, something that you would always want your character ha to have. You'd want to have a, like at least one healing potion. So sage would be in high demand. And then lastly, in the forest, there were eight wild mushrooms, which were basically the base ingredient needed for making all potions. So if you want to make a health, a standard health potion, you're going to need some wild mushrooms and some king's foil. If you want to make a standard mana potion, you're going to need some wild mushrooms and some magic berries. In the mountain deck of material cards, there were 28 cards. The most common, there were 10 of these, were iron ore. And iron ore, so common because there's high demand for it. They're needed in basically all weapons in like mail or like plate armor. So higher armor value stuff. And then there were nine coal cards, which were needed to make steel. There are three mithril items. So that one was rare and that's needed for Mithril gear and mithril weapons, which are like the second highest tier of gear in the game. The first highest is from the dungeons. And the last thing in mountains was precious gemstones. There were two of these, so even more rare. And these were basically adding extra enchantment slots to your gear. Because the thing about enchanting is not every item could be enchanted. You would have items that have, say one enchantment slot or two enchantment slots. And those you can put that many enchantments into. With precious gemstones, you can add enchantment slots to gear to make one that can't normally be enchanted, enchantable. In the enemy category, you have to defeat an enemy and then you can gather from their corpse. And there were 24 of them. There were three fresh meat was used for cooking food and food unlike potions would affect all of your allies. So you could recruit followers, um, two maximum followers, or if you're playing cooperatively, rather than competitively, the other players that are sitting at your table. So any of your followers, your own character, and whatever players are your allies and their followers. So if you make a meal, you can all, all restore a certain amount of health. So that's what the fresh meat was for. And then there was leather. There were nine leather cards. And that was used for crafting gear that was a lesser armor value than the iron or steel gear. There were also nine cloth scraps, which was even lesser than that. But the thing about cloth gear is it had very little armor value. Cloth gear always had at least one enchantment slot. So it was more meant to, to be, for instance, like mage gear, where you could wear a bunch of gear that all has enchantment slots. You can chant all your gear, say plus two attack power on all your gear so that if you get into a combat, you can use one spell and it does twice as much damage as it normally does, you'll take fewer hits. And then the last thing for enemies, there was three of these, so this was also rare, was dragon blood. And this was used in crafting higher end, more powerful items. And then the last deck of material cards was dungeons. Dungeons had 25 cards in the deck. The common ones were runestone and moon shard. And these were basically just used for in various gear and, and stuff that was pretty powerful because a dungeon, and I'll go into the, what the dungeons were in a later video. And then a rare one, which had three was ectoplasm, which was also used for making magical gear that was stronger than most gear. There was three brimstone, which the brimstone was used to make the very best crafted gear in the game. The very, very rare item, the like epic quality item was found in dungeons. And there's only one of these in the deck and it was ambrosia. And this stuff made incredible healing potions and food and gear. There's all these materials. And what I had to do is basically I had two main decks of items. There was crafted gear and there was treasure gear. Treasure gear is only found when you defeat an enemy. Say you're fighting an enemy, it's enemy card, which I'll talk about in a later video. This shows, you know, its stats, its attack power, all that. And it also shows how many treasures you get for defeating it. So if you get two treasures, that comes from the treasure deck. The only time you can get crafted gear is if you make it yourself, which requires these materials. So basically what I did is I made up a bunch of crafted item cards, and then I had to decide which materials should be required to make this thing. It had to be a kind of low number because you had a limit of materials you could hold in your hand. It was 10, because I didn't want you to just be able to stock up on the entire deck of materials and now now players can't uh, gather anymore because everybody's got their hands filled just hoarding those materials. So I wanted to give some incentive to actually crafting stuff and using these materials. So you could only have 10 and then each item, say a shield, it would need just two two wood is, is how you make a simple shield. Or maybe if you want to make an iron banded shield, it would just need one wood and one iron ore. So what I did is after I made this list of like, it was, a, it was a good like 90 items. I made it thematic, but also mechanic. I wanted to make good equal use of all these materials needed for the gear. So then I kind of added up the demand. So how many times does iron ore show up as a necessary ingredient for 
any of the crafted gear. And the number that comes to is 44 actually. So out of the say it was 95 crafted items in the game, 44 of them needed iron ore. And there was a supply, there was 10 iron ore cards in the game. So what I would do is I would divide supply by demand to come up with a percentage. And I wanted to keep all of the material cards in the game roughly around the same percentage. And I was looking for about 30%. The iron ore was a little bit more high demand, low supply because that number 10 divided by 44 comes out to um, 0.22, so 20%. So it's a material that compared to other materials would be needed more often. Even though it's common, it's actually something that you would wanna hoard more than you would wanna hoard, say, wood, which the ratio for that one, supply over demand, was 0.29. I also made a recipe book for the game, for the players, because the item cards I found, I didn't have enough space on each one to write individually on them, what was needed to craft them, and that also didn't seem like a very good method either because then to know how to craft say a mithril great helm you would actually have to shuffle through the entire crafted deck to find that mithril great helm to look at it it just made sense to make a recipe book and i've got a little index for it so there's potions food you know miscellaneous armor trinkets shields weapons so then you can go through and find say greater mana potion and takes three magic berries and one wild mushrooms to make it and it also tells you the quantity of cards that ex even exist there's only one greater mana potion in the game so it tells you that but say lesser health potions there's three of those in the deck so you could make three and have all those in your hand or three different players could each have one and then i also in the back put an index where I listed the materials and then where they show up on each page. So rather than trying to seek out an exact item you want, maybe you have a lot of a material, you can say, okay, I've got a lot of runestone. Let me look through a few recipes to see what I could use those on. I just made that as a way to help players actually use their materials. So one thing I would also do, I'll show you this page, is every item in the game had a gold value, which you could go to town and just sell it for that gold value to, you know, just the town, that you'd sell it back to the game and get that money back. I thought of a gold value. The gold value basically tried to represent how powerful, how 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 good the item was. So if it's just a sword that has one attack power, it's gonna cost like 10 gold. But if it's a sword that has, you know, six attack power, that might be 60 gold. So basically what I did is with all those crafted items and the treasure items, I added up all of the gold value for each of them and then divided it by the number of items in the game to see what the average, what the average gold value per item was. And I wanted that to be a reasonable number. I wanted to know how much gold you should really get from enemies when you defeat them. How much gold should a player be expected to have or needed need to have to buy items because in town you can also buy spell cards material cards enchantments as, as well as just the items so i wanted to make sure you had enough gold to buy things but you also never had quite enough gold so you would always want to go out and get more yeah so i've spent this whole video so far basically just talking about the crafted gear of the materials so i think next video i will actually talk about the rest of the items and the design process around them maybe a little bit more in depth yeah so thanks for watching and uh until next time.